Chapter 56 Lu Xu packed his crate full with 49 stinky tofu, then walked out in the early morning. He considered business today as testing the waters, to see how many pieces of stinky tofu he could sell in the morning. Would he be able to finish selling all 49? It should be possible, seeing that this street was one of the more popular gathering areas for the residents. With family homes to both the north and south of the street, this place was considered to be quite populated. Lu Xiaoyu was still in a deep slumber as he left the house, and as he stepped out, he noticed his old neighbor, who was never seen out of the house, honing his swordsmanship. The two courtyards were separated by a low wooden fence, so everything could be seen clearly. The sword was slow, to the extent which Lu Xu suspected if he was the same man in the same group of metahumans as Ji Wei. Obviously, it looked like an old man's recreational training with a sword. And at this moment, he suddenly felt a strange wave of energy. This was different from any other wave he had felt from anyone else. This wave seemed like it naturally belonged to the heaven and earth. Could he be a metahuman? Lu Xu greeted him energetically, Good morning, sir. The old man stopped his movements and looked at Lu Xu, whose complexion looked much better and wasn't coughing perpetually anymore. The medicine pots and flasks from the ante were also kept away. Lu Xu also felt that this was a good thing. At least Lu Xiaoyu didn't have to go to bug their neighbors for medicine, it was really too embarrassing. The old man smiled calmly, Little Xu going to set up your shop so early? Yeah, I still have to earn money for Xiaoyu and my school fees. Lu Xu continued to ask curiously, Sir, if I may ask, what is it that you are practicing? He asked this because of the wave he felt just now. This man in front of him and Ji Wei, both of them probably did not think that he had already awakened. Sword play. The old man replied. Aha, uh -huh, Lu Xu almost threw a stinky tofu at him and thought, what a cheeky reply, of course, I know you're practicing sword play. The old man laughed and glanced at him, it's just sword play, basically, the most profound of human theories can be learned under the guise of the sword. Do you want to learn? Lu Xu thought, wow, now that you put it so incredibly, he was rather tempted to learn. If this old man was really a metahuman, it could be a good idea for Lu Xu to learn from this old man. After all, he was currently lacking in some offensive ability. But now that the black coats were a formidable and stable group, Lu Xu could not figure out what this Xi Wei was doing and did not want to get himself involved. Moreover, it was very unlike this old man to be practicing with his sword here in the early morning, and to ask Lu Xu if he was interested after a few short exchanges? There was obviously something wrong here. Which was why Lu Xu could only reject, nope. Lu Xu then carried his crate and walked off, another update appeared, from Li Xianyi's distress, plus 199. Oh, so the old man is called Li Xianyi. After Lu Xu left, a woman came out from the house, he doesn't want to learn? His character, aptitude, determination are all very suitable. I don't have much time left. Li Xianyi said calmly while holding on to his sword. He used to be very weak. I'm not sure what he had been through, but it seems like his physique has improved suddenly. It is likely that he holds a deep secret in his heart as well. The woman behind Li Xianyi said. Li Xianyi gazed at the clouds over the horizon, and said calmly, How many secrets must a person have to experience an amazing life? You have secrets, I too have secrets, so does Ji Wei and other members of the Golden Foundation. No one can live long without secrets. Maybe what was lost could be recovered with time, and Ji Wei and the rest could once again obtain those lost pills. The ante hesitated before saying. Li Xianyi shook his head, we shouldn't put our hopes on something so impossible. The legends I carry with me cannot be stopped at my hands. But he's one year too old and missed the optimal training age, the ante thought for a moment before replying. That's okay, Li Xianyi smiled as the silk robes he was wearing swayed with the morning breeze and seemed to be about to fly away. The ante added on, but he's not interested in learning. At this moment, Lu Xu, who had already set up his stall, received another update from Li Xianyi's distress, 
plus 99. He pondered over this for quite a while but was still confused. What kind of situation is this? I've already walked all the way here and there's still distress points incoming? Forget it, selling stinky tofus was more important. As soon as Lu Xu opened the crate, Uncle Li and the rest immediately stopped breathing. But Lu Xu also noticed that everyone wasn't contributing new distress points. Seemed like although the smell was a little pungent, everyone was still able to bear with it. That mischief system of his was quite accurate and if everyone was lying about not being bothered by the smell, he'd be able to tell. As passersby started appearing, the distress points being generated exploded once again. Lu Xu was hoping for the distress points to exceed 14k and with 14 celestial fruits and one night of training, he could finally light up the seventh star. With a new, mass-killing weapon, Lu Xu's attitude had changed. He used to aim to achieve the first nebula within half a month, but now, he could not wait to complete it tonight. In the past, Lu Xu never felt anything when watching the people walk by on the streets. The world was cold. Passersby come and go and had nothing to with others. But now, it was different. Every individual that walked by was money. People as precious resources, this was the backbone of technology. The gleam in Lu Xu's eyes was just like a kidnapper looking at a small child. Some of the old customers from the day before saw Lu Xu's stall and come over to buy a serving. The system's products were always of premium quality, and there were already regular customers on the second day. In the blink of an eye, half the stinky tofus were sold which made Lu Xu worry. He could probably still earn over 14k distress points today but in the future, with more regular customers, wouldn't the stinky tofus be sold out too quickly? The money would still be earned but the distress points would not. This was awkward. He couldn't possibly tell everyone, please leave, I'd like to slowly sell my stinky tofus. Wait, Lu Xu had missed out on one thing. He single-mindedly only wanted to use the 14k distress points to complete the 7th star, but forgot that he needed points for the lottery too. Only by spending on the lottery could he continue his stinky tofu business the next day. In other words, he still lacked 300 to 500 distress points. Seemed like he had to rely on his adorable classmates again. Chapter 57 After selling his stinky tofu, Lu Xu headed to school. When he arrived, classes were already starting and he noticed a sense of excitement in the atmosphere. Instead of the usual unmotivated looks, everyone was busy discussing something. Lu Xu thought that he must have missed something important. He asked his desky Jiang Shui, who was reading a book, what are they talking about? Jiang Shui silently took out his phone and showed Lu Xu a video. The video was a commercial by a leading overseas sports brand. In the video, there were 11 people playing a game of soccer and all of them seemed to have some kind of special ability, playing the game with all kinds of beautiful techniques. This leading overseas sports brand had hired 11 metahumans to appear in their commercial. The commercials ended with the words, nothing is impossible. Oh my god. Lu Xu was stunned. He had been too caught up with discussing training methods with Lu Xiaoyu the previous night, followed by his routine night training, and in the morning, he was outside selling stinky tofu. He had no time at all to surf the internet and who knew such an incident would happen. The content and the last words of this commercial only emphasized one point. That's right, with the appearance of metahumans, nothing was impossible anymore. While the local situation was still conservative, foreigners had already started using metahumans as part of commercials. He returned Jiang Shui his phone, took out his own and started surfing online forums. Indeed, everyone was talking about the commercial. In fact, there was another similar basketball commercial, but it wasn't as exaggerated as this which explained why it wasn't as hot a topic for discussion. In that commercial, a strength-type metahuman was featured leaping from the middle line of the court and dunking. The scene was absolutely ridiculous. Previously, no one could have ever thought such a feat was possible, but now, metahumans could. Lu Xu had a sudden realization that those two commercials represented the way metahumans could be absorbed into society, their commercial value. 
it was proven that foreigners were better at making use of the commercial value of metahumans. Striking while metahumans was a hot topic worldwide, they allowed these attention-seeking metahumans to be the center of attention. In the forums, everyone was coming up with crazy ideas such as whether the NBA this year would be dominated by metahumans. And from now on, the Olympics will be a stage for metahumans too. There were some truths in this. Based on Lu Xu's enhanced body, even if the Olympic gold medalist was twice as good, he would still run slower than him. In badminton, if a normal being faced off with a metahuman, there was no doubt that the Awaken would wipe the floor with his opponent. The appearance of metahumans might not incur a war after all. But Lu Xu was thinking about something else. Every country had around 100,000 metahumans and was it possible for all of them to be satisfied with earning money this way? Probably not. Not everyone was so peace-loving. Based on this point, Lu Xu was leaning towards the methods of the black coats to prioritize the country's stability and safety instead of riches and prosperity. Some also said in the forums that large companies overseas were trying to get their hands on the limited number of metahumans by offering a very attractive price. Even if they had no plans for them yet, the companies just wanted to recruit them first. This was never going to happen locally. Be it metahumans or the trainees, they were all under the control of the black coats. But someone did mention that in their Daoyuan class, there were cases of big companies recruiting the metahuman trainees. Some class aptitude student had leaked his abilities and was offered an attractive deal by a big company. As of now, the Daoyuan class confidentiality regulations only prohibited the sharing of contents taught in class, but did not mention anything against sharing about your own powers as well as having any form of employer-employee relationships. Not only class A aptitude trainees were targeted. From class A to F, those big companies did not seem to discriminate and some were recruited as spokesmen while others, as bodyguards. Amongst the metahumans, a special kind had appeared. This kind of metahumans had enhanced brain powers and was just as good as a calculator. All kinds of big companies deemed them as a must-obtained resource, but they were very rare. This feeling was just like when the internet first started becoming popular and it was the main topic of almost all conversations. Everyone wanted to experience using the internet. Now it was the metahumans era. It seemed like the norm for every company to have at least one or two metahumans with them. Lu Xu did not understand one point. Even though the government had become more humane and lenient when dealing with societal issues, why would they let metahumans, this kind of valuable resources, be taken away from under their nose? Anyways, Lu Xu was not interested in being in the limelight as the saying went, the ones in the lead usually bear the brunt of attack. If he were to be part of a commercial, when the day of chaos arrived, everyone would know about his power and his advantage would be gone. On the forums, a new topic was started regarding the pros and cons of awakening. The pros mentioned that metahumans could further improve society, speed up the process of science and production, as well as provide lifestyle entertainment. The cons mainly talked about the fear of metahumans misusing their abilities. Lu Xu was more concerned about the cons. His opinion was that there were definitely bad people out there and most metahumans also had a sense of superiority. While Lu Xu was still reading the forums, Jiang Shui was curious, what are you looking at? The forums. I'm interested in what other people have to say about metahumans and seems like some of their information are quite accurate. Lu Xu explained. Send me the link. I want to read too, Jiang Shui requested. Sure, Lu Xu replied. He was surprised that Jiang Shui had never read the forums. At this moment, the class representative Lu Li walked over, pulled out a chair and sat beside Jiang Shui and Lu Xu. Lu Xu was baffled and wondered what he was up to. Let's cut to the chase, Lu Li said, my family owns a company and after some discussion with my dad last night, we are interested in signing agreements with some metahumans. You will be paid a monthly income and in other words, we would like to recruit some metahumans as our employees. Lu Xu was annoyed. Did he think metahumans could be recruited just like that? 
Metahumans willing to become bodyguards were already the minority and not to mention being a normal employee. He must be joking. Lu Xu felt that Lu Li's dad could be serious in recruiting metahumans but somehow hearing it from Lu Li, it all seemed like a joke. Having said those words, Lu Li stared at Jiang Shuyi and Lu Xu with a serious face. Ahem, Lu Xu cleared his throat, your look of seriousness, it looks so fake. Lu Li? From Lu Li's Distress, Plus 377 Chapter 58 Lu Xu had never been interested in Lu Li's family business, but these few days, he had noticed the posh car with car plate, 99,999, that fetched Lu Li from school. Although a poor bloke like Lu Xu could not identify the brand, he knew that it was not a car normal people could afford. But this did not concern Lu Xu, other people's wealth was none of his business. Hearing that Lu Li's father was trying to recruit metahumans made Lu Xu feel like they had too much money so they might as well recruit some metahumans for fun. Some bosses out there like to say, I'm not educated but my employees are all smart and brilliant. In the end, these people are still under me, right? This metaphor may not be the best, but the idea was there. But regardless of what others felt, Lu Xu hated that idea, and he rebutted Lu Li for half a day, which made him speechless. Lu Li took a deep breath, Lu Xu, your family is poor so this may be a very rare opportunity. Lu Xu's twitched his mouth, you're not truly happy. This stunned Lu Li. What did that mean? Why the sudden awkward line? Wasn't that the title of the band Mayday's song? He thought for two minutes before replying, your smile is just your method for protection? Lu Xu shook his head in disappointment, you're not truly happy, but I am. Lu Li almost pissed his pants. This guy must be crazy. I'm talking to you about recruiting matters and here you are telling me weird song lyrics and all your weird replies. What happiness could you possibly have, can poor blokes even be happy? How could such a person exist? From Lu Li's Distress, Plus 411 but to Lu Xu, despite his poverty, he and Lu Xiaoyu were good at finding happiness during tough times and were in fact happy. So he felt that he was indeed happier than Lu Li. As for the awkward lines, his talent of getting on others' nerves activated and just blurted them out, how smooth. Annoyed, Lu Li left and Jiang Shui tucked his head down. Go ahead and laugh, why keep it in, Lu Xu coughed. <laughs> Jiang Shui couldn't tolerate it anymore. He had realized that this desky of his was really talented in some areas. But on second thought, Jiang Shui really admired Lu Xu's mindset. He had also heard about Lu Xu's case, being an orphan, bringing along a little sister, having to sell eggs in the morning to feed his family, and despite all that, he could still maintain excellent grades. The most important thing about him was that despite his obstacle-filled life, he wasn't greedy. But truthfully, Lu Xu did not want to earn Lu Li's money for two reasons one was that he did not wish to create problems and two, it was something he had no interest in. After Lu Li had left, Lu Xu noticed multiple classmates, including some of the new transfer students, had gathered around this class rep. Classes had ended as everyone went to the canteen for lunch and Lu Xu saw the group of them sitting around and enthusiastically discussing something. There seemed to be a myriad of complicated feelings as some were sniggering while others had a judgmental look. From Lu Li's point of view, he had tier B aptitude and once training started in Daoyuan class, he would definitely leave Lu Xu behind. Recruiting Lu Xu was an act of kindness from Lu Li's part and he was willing to let go of past grudges only to be rebutted, which almost made him question himself. The current Lu Li was just a high school student and how shrewd could a high school student be? Not having his emotions written on his face was already an achievement. Someone teased, what's wrong, failed in recruiting a class F. Lu Li scorned, it would be the same with or without him. Lu Xu was rather calm as he took a deep breath before taking out his lunchbox. Today's lunch was rather special and it was all for the distress points, hope no one blames me. The moment Lu Xu opened his lunchbox, a radius of 50m around Lu Xu was suddenly hit with the stench of stinky tofu. 
Luli and friends were still chatting merrily when they suddenly realized the stench. The shh asterisk T, what is that? Someone took his lunchbox and left. Everyone turned towards Lu Xu as the stench had originated from there, only to see Lu Xu let out a smile, revealing a white set of teeth, specially made stinky tofu, made it myself. Are you guys surprised? From Lu Li's distress. From Yuan Lingqi's distress. Who would have expected Lu Xu to suddenly make such a move, instantly affecting a whole bunch of people? A wave of income came in and Lu Xu's total distress points to a grand total of 18k. What a result, not only could he complete the 7th star and it would also not affect his stinky tofu business the next day. Perfect. Lu Xu felt that since he was still lacking in distress points, he could as well save some stinky tofu for lunch which could act as a mass killing weapon. Indeed, the effect was tremendous. Insulting others could also generate distress points, but Lu Xu felt that this method was quite extreme and it was something the society could never accept. He also considered eating stinky tofu on a public bus when the passengers had nowhere to escape, which would definitely cause a breakthrough in distress points, but this was also too extreme. Lu Xu did not share the exact same values as the society but instead, had a set of his own rules to follow. In comparison, causing distress to these classmates who never got along with him did not result in any guilty conscience in Lu Xu. The most important thing was feeling good about yourself and despite what others may say, Lu Xu just wanted to have a clear conscience. Everyone saw Lu Xu taking his time with his stinky tofu and decided to leave. Who knew how long this scum would take to eat? However, while everyone was trying to escape, Jiang Shui carried his plate and sat in front of Lu Xu, I like stinky tofu, can we exchange? Lu Xu checked his records and indeed, there was none from Jiang Shui. Seems like this guy really likes stinky tofu. Here, Lu Xu gave his remaining stinky tofus to Jiang Shui who in return gave her plate of rice to Lu Xu. At this point in time, Jiang Shui was a godly existence. One reason was his good looks which many guys had misunderstood him for, the second was that everyone knew he had tier B aptitude and a bright future. According to Jiang Shui's previous schoolmate, his family was quite well-to-do but how well, Lu Xu wasn't sure. This series of reasons caused other classmates to look up to Jiang Shui and this godly existence was not sitting in front of the much-hated Lu Xu. The sight of it annoyed everyone. When did these two start hanging out? As a matter of fact, Lu Xu was surprised too. Chapter 59 I heard Lu Xu stopped selling eggs in the morning, did he switch to selling stinky tofu? From what I have heard, it seemed like it is quite tasty. In the afternoon class, Lu Xu started scrolling through the online forums. He had topped the class for the previous assessment exam and the contents of this semester were trivial to him. The truth was that the three years of high school could be completed within a year and there were many cases of poor performing students, with almost zero understanding of the content suddenly being able to do well. Many a time, the content seemed difficult when studying but after graduating and looking back, it would seem easy. Lu Xu suddenly realized Jiang Shui studying physics and curiously asked, why study physics? Aren't you an art student? It might be useful in the future, Jiang Shui replied, in the past. I felt that physics was quite useless and chose arts instead, but after the appearance of metahumans, having some knowledge about physics will be beneficial. That made a lot of sense and upon hearing Jiang Shui's views, Lu Xu felt that he was quite a forward-thinking student. Lu Xu requested, let me take a look at your chemistry textbook. Since the black coats were relying on science and technology to research and produce weapons for metahumans, this meant that physics and chemistry must be useful. Even if he wasn't going to do intensive research, having more knowledge would not hurt. Lu Xu had never been stubborn about such things. As long as it was something useful, he would always acquire it. At least, Next time he would not crack an unintelligent joke like how sodium was a mysterious path to greatness. During the afternoon, there was a huge commotion again. 
23 more students had been expelled from the Daoyuan class due to the violation of confidential regulations, but fortunately, none were from sophomore class too. Everyone had thought that the expulsion crisis had ended after the first time and no one expected for the second wave of cleansing. These strict consequences left everyone speechless. No one knew what was allowed or what was not allowed to be said. After the last wave of expulsion, many parents of the expelled students had tried pulling strings, either by means of bribes or threatens. But what they realized was that they could not contact anyone of influence on the matter. The black coats were more secretive than any officials or government sectors and things were not within their control either. They only listened to their direct higher-ups. They were cautious about the thought of students making into the Daoyuan class through pulling of strings and this could only be possible through their higher-ups. The role of the local officials? Insignificant. Because of this, many understood the rule once expelled, there would be no reverting it. Any past relations were no longer useful. As a matter of fact, the black coats were not stubborn nor did they refuse to acknowledge these relations but the extent of influence was just not enough. Parents at home would constantly remind their child to be prudent as there was no turning back after being expelled. The gravity of the situation had changed for the worse with the second wave of expulsion. However, cases of students awakening this time were rare and within the whole of Luocheng International School, there was only one such incident. The rest were bawling their eyes out. Lu Xu was thinking. What were the chances that there was someone within the black coats who could use his mind to spy on the entire country, just like Professor X? That would be such a waste of talent. Could the black coats be using some kind of technology to keep track of everyone's computers? He could not be sure. With the new era of metahumans came happiness and sorrow. In the evening, the twilight of the sunset painted Luocheng International School with a soft orange glow and clouds slowly drifted away, into the endless skyline. The light shone through the small spaces the buildings, giving off a peaceful and quiet atmosphere. Even the Daoyuan class students were required to leave the school compounds first before showing their night pass, and after a series of stringent checks then they would be allowed back in. Today, Shi Fei did not teach anything important, only the usual lecture on the kinship of the three, and some already known updates about the world, the people were changing, the environment was changing and so were the animals and plants. Lu Xu had already read about these on the forums, but they were mostly about changes in animals and plants. As for changes to the surroundings, no one really saw anything concrete besides the fact that several districts had been cordoned off. As the lessons ended, Shi Fei looked at everyone sitting on the floor mat and calmly said, I trust that everyone had learned from the last two expulsions that the Daoyuan class is a very serious matter, and we definitely would not appease anyone who may be of harm to the country. I hope that no one else would commit the same mistake. I also understand that there are people in this society who wants to benefit of metahumans, but I advise against it. Please do not waste your talents. From next week onwards, the consequences will not be as simple as expulsion. These words summarized three main points, confidentiality, no easy rewards and violating rules would not go unpunished. The second point, the black coats knew that there were people trying to recruit metahumans and it was okay to earn some money. But since the students were precious talents to them, they did not want them to overdo it. This was the difference in methods abroad and locally. In other countries, they were already maximizing on the commercial value of metahumans while locally, the metahumans were treated as talents to be cultivated. What exactly was meant by talents? Basically, they were important talents needed to build a good foundation for the country. Lu Xu nodded. It seemed that the government was trying to gather all the metahumans for two reasons, stability and the prosperity of the country as a whole. It would be best to go with the flow while experimenting on his own. Hypothetically, someone could rebel and say, I don't want to be part of the talents anymore and I'm going to do my own thing so leave me alone. This would be an insane thing to do as, given the situation, the black coats had the power to overwrite anything. The future was still uncertain but this was the case as of now. But Lu Xu still had that same thought. 
What tragedy would befall upon the world if a gang of metahumans capable of resisting authority and modern weapons had appeared? Lu Xu had a plan. If such a situation ever arose, he would bring Lu Xiaoyu and escape. The third point of Shifei's words, from next week onwards, the consequences will not be as simple as expulsion. This sentence had a hidden meaning. The Daoyuan class was finally going to impart the real deal. Honestly, Lu Xu only cared about the training methods that the black coats had been talking about. Wait. Actually, even the training methods were not as interesting anymore. Previously, his interest in the training methods was because Lu Xiaoyu lacked abilities, but not anymore. Lu Xu was no longer concerned about anyone else as long as he and Lu Xiaoyu possessed the power to go against authority and modern weapons, and this meant that they could do anything they ever wished for. Chapter 60 Upon opening the front door of his house, Lu Xu saw that Lu Xiaoyu was watching the light comedy being played while on the couch with her feet up the air. With a face full of surprise, she told Lu Xu, Lu Xu, Lu Xu, training really does work. I no longer feel that the house is chilly anymore. Stunned initially, Lu Xu subsequently laughed after hearing her words. This old apartment didn't have any air conditioning heater and when winter came, Lu Xiaoyu would always be wrapped up in a thick blanket whenever she was watching the television on the couch. Furthermore, she would wake up every morning feeling cold on her nose. However, Lu Xu did not have any better idea in his mind and all he could do was to turn on the heater in Lu Xiaoyu's room on the coldest days. He would then sleep on the floor in her room where it would be more comfortable for the both of them. Even if such was the case, the heater could not be turned on often as the landlord had left it in such a shabby condition. Thus, turning it on would barely solve the situation at all. Early in the spring season as such, the nights were still unbearably chilly for them. All is well now. Lu Xiaoyu and Lu Xu had both strengthened their physical condition through the cultivation of their abilities, and were no longer afraid of the cold. No matter what was in store for them in the future, the current benefits their training had brought about cannot be dismissed. Lu Xu probed, we'll go and catch the movie tomorrow afternoon. I passed you my phone yesterday to buy the tickets. Have you gotten them? Yeah, yeah. I've gotten them, as she nodded happily. Lu Xiaoyu had never been to a cinema and just the thought of watching a movie together with Lu Xu was enough to keep her up all night feeling excited. Lu Xu was too lazy to ask her about anything else. As for Lu Xiaoyu's training system, it was fully automatic and there was no need to worry about it. Perhaps, she could even be rising up the class gradings as they sit through the movie tomorrow. How many people would be pissed to death if they were to know how carefree and effortless Lu Xiaoyu's training journey was? Lu Xu simply drew out all the portions of stinky tofu he needed for tomorrow morning's business and peacefully went on to his training. Tomorrow's plan was to wake up early in the morning in order to sell his stinky tofus and then proceed to bring Lu Xiaoyu to the movies. After that, in the afternoon, they would go and eat the duck blood vermicelli soup which was mentioned by her a long time ago. There shouldn't be an issue with this plan. There weren't any surprises from the lottery, nor was there another golden piece of paper appearing again. Lu Xu was already mentally prepared long beforehand and he wasn't disappointed at all. With 14,000 distress remaining, he used up all of them at one go to purchase celestial fruits with the goal to light the seventh star by tonight. He was curious to find out what magical phenomenon would happen when he had completed lighting up the first nebula on the map. Lu Xiaoyu was sitting beside him, no longer watching the television but rather, staring at Lu Xu swallowing celestial fruits one after another. Her mouth was salivating till it almost overflowed. Lu Xu, can you think of a way so that I can eat just one of that fruit? Just one, as she raised up her index finger to show the number one with a face full of sincerity. Lu Xu's eyes were wide open and said with all helplessness, this is something you really can't eat. Aww. As Lu Xiaoyu went back to watching the television. Up until dawn, the sky looked as white as the belly of a fish from a distance as the white silky sunlight swiftly penetrated the layers of cloud, hiding the skies. The gathered celestial energy residing in Lu Xu was swirling around like huge ripples at this moment, 
rapidly coursing throughout his entire body. It felt as if there was a thunderstorm and with the torrents combining into a huge tsunami, it crashed towards the huge obstacles in order to destroy them. For the first time, Lu Xu felt the pain from his own training, as if there were dams clogging up the rivers in his body which was inevitably destroyed by this tsunami in one fell swoop. All Lu Xu felt was a smooth sense of ease and relief just as this rush of energy had passed. Water would eventually have to return to the seas as all these wandering celestial energies sprinted towards the seventh star. As they gathered, the seventh star was finally lighted up, completing the first nebula on the map. In this boundless sea of darkness within the map, the first nebula in the corner of the map flashed a glorious light of victory, signaling the power of life. The only thing left behind in Lu Xu was pure happiness and there was nothing else at that moment which could compare to the joy brought to him, by the thought of him becoming stronger. Being an orphan from young with no one to rely on, Lu Xu had survived all on his own. He understood the true nature of society, where only the strongest will survive and that the world was never actually fair at all. If the world's true colors were really as such, the only thing he had to do was, to get stronger. This feeling of joy was like a key, gently entering the galactic map, which caused the first nebula to start spinning. With the seventh star at the center, the six other stars revolved around it with their own trajectory. This entire nebula felt as if it was a world on its own, building itself within Lu Xu's chest. Just like a flame, there would come a day where it would brightly blaze up. Above the vast nebulas, the top of the seventh nebula impressively revealed a black sword made of jade with the words written on it, Corpse Dog. So this change was brought about by completing the first nebula? Lu Xu opened his eyes wide and with an intentional wave of his hands, the corpse dog rushed out from within his chest, floating right in front of him. The word, corpse dog, was something Lu Xu was familiar with as he had come across this term during his previous homework for the Dao Yuan class. Humans have three finer spirits and seven basic instincts that motivate a human being. The finer spirits are split into three realms, heaven, earth, and man which are also known as the ethereal spirit, the sensory spirit and the spirit of life respectively. The seven basic instincts are split into various types, namely being, happiness, anger, love, fear, sadness, evil and pensiveness. They were also known as the corpse dog, the concealed arrow, the een of sparrow, the seizing thief, the non-toxic, the filth removal and the smelly lung respectively. Lu Xu wasn't sure as to what mystery the corpse dog forebode. Could it be that the seven nebulas represented his own seven seven basic instincts? This was the frustration Lu Xu was facing in his journey of cultivating his own abilities. There was no one he could ask help from and he had to figure everything out all by himself through his own experimentation. Lu Xu couldn't possibly use that black mysterious, ancient-looking blade to slash himself or Lu Xiaoyu right. The sword was rather small in size, and its body flowed smoothly, looking more similar to a dagger than a sword. The blade did not feel comfortable in his hands, but it could dance around in the air according to his exact wishes. As such, Lu Xu couldn't stop playing with it. Being able to control the dagger with just his thoughts, it meant that, other than just his physical prowess reaching class E, Lu Xu had unlocked another class of supernatural powers. The flying dagger wasn't exceptionally swift, but it was definitely faster than the punches Lu Xu could throw out and of course, it couldn't match up to the speed of bullets. However, after utilizing this ability for a short while, he soon felt a sense of fatigue. This was the first time Lu Xu had ever felt fatigued ever since starting his practice. From the look of it, he did manage to reach class E and possess the ability to control a flying sword although not for long. Lu Xu had also attempted to control other items, but other than this dagger, he could not even control a single piece of tissue. Does this mean that it was truly an ability to control a flying sword? Hey, if he could get his hands on such a special ability upon reaching class E, then what kind of level would his neighbor, Li Xieni, be? Lu Xu had initially intended to learn a bit of swordplay from Li Xieni, but retracted his intentions, as he was unsure of the other party's actual identity. However, as of now, 
Lu Xu had hatched a new plan since his galactic map was related to swords and he was considering whether or not he should be learning a thing or two from Li Xianyi. After all, he did have a sword of his own but all he could perform was some form of stabbing actions which were similar to child play. So should he or should he not learn from his neighbor? Lu Xu thought for a long time before deciding that it is better to stay cautious. Let's wait and see. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens 